Okay, thank you. Uh, my talk is about uh, variants of uh, quasi-periodicity, cover seats, and uh, this kind of stuff in the approximate version. Uh, let me start by introducing the basics or recalling the basics because they might be known to many of you. Uh, a string is called periodic if it's formed uh, of repetitions of the same period, more, more than two repetitions of the same period. And a string is called quasi-periodic if it is covered by one of So shorter than the string itself. As we can see, a periodic string is also quasi-periodic. So it's covered by, by, by some shorter factor. Uh, the, the same string, if we make some changes in the string, then we can obtain a string that has no period because its structure changed just a bit, but still has the same cover. So this example is to show that quasi-periodicity is actually a, a generalization of periodicity in the sense that you can it can grasp periodic properties of strings that are not exactly periodic. Um, but then we can take the same string and we can change it even further. And then we can make it have no, so that it has no proper cover, but it has an approximate cover. Uh, so we see that this string is covered by, by the factor a, a, b, a, a, but some of the occurrences are approximate, have uh, one mismatch at those positions. This is the main problem that uh, I want to focus on in this talk. Let us formally state the problem. We are given a string uh, of length n, we are given a cover length that uh, we want to compute the cover of this length. We are given some metric and the threshold k on the number of uh, uh, of errors in each uh, subsequent occurrence, and we want to find a string of this length c whose uh, approximate occurrences with at most k errors cover the string t, uh, as shown in, in the picture from the previous slide. Uh, we consider various metrics. Uh, one of them is the Hamming distance, which is just the number of mismatches. Uh, another is the edit distance, unit edit distance, or Levenstein distance in which uh, we allow insertions, deletions, and substitutions, and each of the operations costs, uh, uh, has unit cost. And the, this, this, the, the, this metric is often uh, thought about as computing the D array, which is just a dynamic programming array of computing the, the, the edit distance. And then we also consider weighted edit distance in which each of the edit operations has some cost. Uh, here we have a matrix that specifies some sample costs and here from this matrix we can read the costs of inserting subsequent letters, of deleting letters A, B or C from the string and the costs of substitu substituting one letter with another letter. Uh, and these are the kinds of metrics that we'll consider. Um, the problem uh, has two basic variants. Uh, the first variant is when there is at least one exact occurrence of the cover in the string, uh, as shown here. And this is called the restricted variant of the, of the problem. And then there is another variant in which, as we see, every occurrence, every approximate occurrence of the cover has at least one error. Here we, it's a mismatch error. And this is called the general version of the, of the problem. And those two versions uh, vary a lot. Uh, it was shown uh, uh, by Sim et al. and uh, Christo Dulakis et al. that uh, this, the general version of the problem in which we don't have to have any exact occurrence is uh, NP complete. Uh, their proof was for weighted edit distance. Uh, I have to make a disclaimer here because I'm referring to two papers, but uh, the earlier of them was actually written in Korean and I'm not that fluent in Korean. So the other paper uh, has a lot of, uh, uh, uses the, a lot of uh, ideas from the first uh, paper, but uh, is uh, formulated for a more general var variant of quasi-periodicity called seeds. And uh, that's why I'll be mostly referring to the other, the, the later one but they are quite, quite similar in a sense. The second one is just more general. And uh, actually the second one used an alpha strings over alphabet 12 and uh, general uh, matrix of uh, costs of edit operations. 
And our first result is a proof that the problem is NP-complete already for the Hamming distance and already for a binary alphabet. So it's kind of simpler. And let me just give you first a brief idea of how the proof goes. Uh, we use uh, a known NP-complete problem called Hamming string consensus, in which we have uh, M binary strings of the same length, and we are given a threshold, an integer K, and the goal is to uh, compute a string S uh, of the same length, whose Hamming distance to all the strings that are given is at most K. This problem is NP-complete already for the binary alphabet. And we make a reduction from, from this problem, so from having M strings of the same length and computing one, strings, one string at small Hamming distance to the general approximate uh, cover problem. Uh, first, we use a morphism that takes a letter C, which is a zero or a one, and produces some block, which contains this letter at some position. And uh, we apply this morphism if, uh, if one of the string, we apply this morphism to all the strings in the binary string, uh, in the binary Hamming string consensus problem, uh, letter by letter, and, but we prepend them with a short special block. And this way we obtain a string called gamma i for a given string. And then we produce a text, which is a concatenation of those gamma i's. And we show that the Hamming string consensus problem can be reduced to the general approximate uh, cover problem under the Hamming distance for exactly this string. The number, the, the integer k stays the same. And now the cover length that we are looking for is exactly the length of gamma i. And I haven't given you the exact uh, forms of these morphisms and of the gamma i because it's not so important for the talk. You can check this out in the paper. But the main property that we have from this exact morphism is as follows. Uh, assume you have two of these gamma, gammas, gamma i and gamma j, produced from different strings from the uh, Hamming string consensus. And uh, then if they overlap a lot, if they overlap on at least something like 2k plus four positions, then we know that they have more than 2k mismatches, this overlap. So they have, they vary, they are quite different actually. Uh, and then how do we use this property? So recall that we have constructed a text which is just a concatenation of those gammas and assume that the, it has an approximate cover that looks like that. Uh, since we are in the Hamming uh, distance model and uh, C has to be an approximate cover, it has to occur in the prefix of T. So as a, it has to match a prefix of T with at most K mismatches. And assume that it has another occurrence which is, does not align with any of the gammas. Uh, if this is the case, then the other occurrence has a large overlap with one of the gammas. In this case, it has a large overlap with gamma two. But because C occurs also matches the beginning of, of the text with some number of mismatches, then it also has an approximate overlap with uh, an approximate common prefix with gamma one. And then we see from the colors, the green color and the red color correspond to the colors from the, from the lemma. And we see that in this case, uh, the green and the red part have to have more than 2K mismatches, which shows that C cannot match both of these fragments with at most K mismatches from the triangle inequality. So this shows that actually uh, this situation is not possible and C has each occurrence of C has to be aligned with one of the gammas. And then this very much looks like a consensus string. So we see that C has to match all the gammas. So C is a consensus string of all the, all the gamma strings. And this is how those two problems, the Hamming string consensus and the general approximate cover are related. Okay, that's it about the reduction. I just wanted to give you some rough idea so that you don't have to check out all the formulas in the paper. Uh, and from now on, we will only consider, since this is NP-hard, uh, we will only consider the restricted version of the problem, which is also well, seems quite practical because like, we could expect at least one occurrence of the cover to be exactly there in the, in the text. Um, and when we consider the restricted version, we can actually think about two formulations of the problem. 
One is the formulation that we have already studied. So uh, we want to compute for every factor of t, because we know that the cover is a factor of t. We want to compute for every factor of t the minimal threshold k such that s is a k approximate cover of t under this threshold uh, and with a given met metric t. Uh, but we also, in the paper, we introduced uh, a different uh, statement of the problem, uh, a bit the other way around. So for every factor, uh, we are given, we are given a, a threshold in the beginning, and then for every factor, we want to know under this threshold how many positions in T are covered by approximate occurrences of this factor. So here we don't expect the factor to cover maybe all the positions, but then we want to know how many positions in total are covered. So this is yet another approximate uh, definition of the, of the problem. Um, okay, so, in, so the first version is we have to cover the whole string and the other, we are given a threshold and we want to cover as much as we can. Um, and for the, 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 pre, the first variant was already studied in the same two papers that I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, and these are the results. And we managed to improve the algorithm for the weighted edit distance by roughly a factor of root n. And then we also obtained several results for the K coverage problem. Uh, let me try to guide you through what is going on here. Uh, first of all, so we want to compute the K, uh, let me start from the K coverage. We want to compute the K coverage uh, under the humming distance. And in the first variant, we want to compute it for all the factors of the string. And in the other variant, we want to just compute it for all the prefixes. So assume that the cover has an occurrence as a prefix of the best, an exact occurrence. Why do we actually study those problems? Those problems are related with a known variant of covers. At this point of the talk, it's probably quite hard not to mix all the definitions of variance of quasi-periodicity, but uh, there will be more. Uh, so an enhanced cover uh, is a cover uh, which, is, which covers some, it's not an exact cover, but it covers some number of positions of the string, and it has to be a border of the text. So it's a border, and it covers as many positions as possible. Uh, it is known that in the exact uh, variant without approximation, this problem can be solved in linear time. But then the same problem can be also studied in the approximate uh, variant where the occurrences of the cover, some of the occurrences of the enhanced cover don't have to be exact. So in this way, we obtain a nice uh, notion of a restricted one approximate enhanced cover. We, have, we can have one error in each in each occurrence, and this is for the humming distance. And interestingly, okay, and this problem can also be studied in two variants, uh, the bordered version in which uh, uh, it, the enhanced cover, the approximate enhanced cover has to have exact occurrences as a prefix and a suffix, or the uh, relaxed version which, in which uh, uh, those occurrences can be approximate as well. And interestingly, those uh, approximate enhanced covers were already studied. And the algorithms that were obtained uh, for these two variants can be seen in the bottom of the, of the slide here. Uh, the, the more relaxed variant in which uh, we don't have to, uh, the, the approximate enhanced cover doesn't have to be an exact border, has a slower solution. And it turns out that from our algorithm for K coverage, it is straightforward to obtain all these approximate enhanced covers. So this is how we improve upon the, the first result by good uh, from this year. And then uh, the, the second variant of K coverage uh, for prefixes uh, uh, allows us to improve the other uh, variant that was considered by good. Um, so this is basically one of the motivations of why do we consider K coverage at all. Uh, let me just briefly say, how do we obtain those results for K coverage? Uh, let us recall the pref array, which is an array that stores the longest common prefixes between the whole text and all the uh, possible suffixes of the text. Uh, one can consider an approximate version of this array in which we allow up to K mismatches. And then uh, if we have this table, this prefix array with at most k mismatches, then the second of these algorithms can actually be implemented in linear time. 
So we, we get a linear time algorithm that uses this array and computes the K coverage for all the prefixes of the string. Uh, and luckily there was a nice paper by Kaplan et al who actually showed how to compute this approximate prep table with a slightly different formulation, but exactly in the time complexity that is shown here. Um, interestingly, uh, when we take SK zero, we actually obtain an alternative linear time algorithm for computing the standard enhanced covers without approximation. So this is one of the results here. And the other result for K coverage under the Hamming distance, we study not exactly the pref array, we use not exactly the pref array, but a generalized version of this array in which we want to compute the longest common prefixes between a fixed suffix and all the other suffixes of the string. Luckily, uh, another paper by Fleury et al. showed how to compute all these arrays in n square time. And this is how do we solve the, uh, and like we use this together with the algorithm from the previous case to solve the K coverage for the Hamming distance. Interestingly, this algorithm also can be used to obtain a different solution for Hamming distance for restricted approximate cover just by taking all the possible Ks. Uh, Okay, the third one uh, for the Levenstein distance, I will not tell you much because I would need to define incremental string comparison by Landau et al. And this is the main tool that we use here. Uh, so I will just focus uh, to the end of the talk on the, uh, on the final uh, variant uh, in, with the weighted edit distance. Uh, since this K coverage is a new notion, I will stick to the restricted approximate cover problem because those two solutions are basically quite similar. Uh, let me recall the, the statement of the problem. Uh, so we want to compute, uh, we are given uh, a string and we consider the weighted edit distance. And for every factor of the string, we want to find the minimal threshold K such that S is a K approximate uh, cover of T. For the purposes of this talk, we will just use Levenstein distance. Uh, just for simplicity, so the costs are unit. And this is an example. So we see that, uh, uh, so this has to be a restricted cover, so it has at least one exact occurrence. And then we have, in the first occurrence, we have a substitution, in the third one, a deletion, and in the uh, fourth one, a sub uh, an insertion. So here, in this case, for this factor, this would be, K would be one. Uh, first, uh, the, so the next two slides are for fans of dynamic programming, uh, because this is how this uh, solution is obtained. We start with, by recalling a variant of the n, n to the fourth power time algorithm. So for every factor of the text, I want to compute an array. Uh, this array will give me the, uh, for, for every possible position i, we consider the suffix from i to the end of the string and we want to cover it by approximate occurrences of T, A, B, and uh, this stores the minimum K, so the minimum threshold for which uh, this covering is possible. And there is a pretty simple pseudocode that allows us to compute this array. Uh, so, okay, we want, to con we want to cover a suffix from the position I to the end of the string. Uh, what do we do? Uh, we select, the, the, the second loop goes through uh, all possible uh, values of J. Uh, so J means where is the end of the first approximate occurrence of TAB. And then if we know the end of the approximate occurrence, then the cost of covering is the maximum of two values. One is the edit distance between the, the, the original factor and the factor, the approximate occurrence. And the other is uh, the minimum out of a subrange of uh, already computed uh, values in the array Q. Uh, the first part can be computed with a simple dynamic RMQ uh, algorithm. And the other part, uh, we actually compute edit distance. So we can use, refer to the D array, which computes the edit distance, but then we consider a more general uh, D array. Oops, there should have been, uh, a, 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 this should have been uh, other, uh, yeah, the, it should have been A, B, uh, I, J, sorry. And so we refer, we use a D array, which is just gives the, 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 the edit distance between, between the factors. 
Uh, and this is basically how we get the n into the fourth power algorithm. And then uh, if we want to improve upon it, just let me just go very briefly through it. Uh, the main techniques are as follows. Uh, we want to actually see for a given i, what do we compute? We have two values. One is mean q, it is non-increasing. The other one is daibj, which is pretty random, unfortunately. But then we can consider only the minimum out of daibj, then the minimum to the right, then the minimum to the right, and so on. And these are actually all the relevant values uh, that uh, we need to consider. And we have a nice lemma that says that if we take a look at the first point where the other graph crosses the, the, the mini Q graph, and then the, the predecessor of this, of this point, then out of these two values, we will have the global minimum that, uh, so one of these two uh, positions J will give us the, the global minimum. Uh, so this allows to use uh, binary search to compute uh, those, two, uh, those two positions. Uh, so this, I will not go through the pseudocode maybe, so this get, would get us from n squared to n log n. So in total, this would be n cube log n because we go through all the possible factors. But then unfortunately, there's a problem that we are using arrays which take in total n square, n to the fourth power space. And uh, in order to deal with this, we only store those arrays for uh, positions where one of a or a or i is a multiple of roughly root n and then we also store a limited range of the DRAs for uh, for indexes which are at most n positions apart and then if you want to compute daibj so the distance between uh, the factor from i to j and from a to b we take a look at how those two factors are aligned and we see that we consider the first point where we reach one of the designated points, which are multiples of M. And then we compute the orange part using the fragments of D arrays and the uh, violet part using the LABI arrays. And then when we take a look at how much space it all takes and what is the time complexity of the algorithm, we arrive at uh, N cube times root N log N time. This was just to give you a sketch, but Okay, maybe a bit too detailed. Let me go to the summary. So this is once again, the results that we obtained and the previous results that were obtained in this area. At this point, I really have to mention some other work, which uses a different definition of approximate covers. Uh, so assume we have a string that has no cover, then what we can do, we could change some letters of the string so that it becomes a string that has an exact cover. And this is a definition of an approximate cover that was used by Ami et al. in several uh, papers, uh, at least in three papers in the last CPMs. Uh, so we want to compute the minimum number of substitutions in T to obtain a string which really has a proper cover. And this is a different definition of approximate quasi periodicity. The main differences are that here we count the total number of substitutions instead of the maximum number of substitutions. And also this definition does not allow different letters at the same position. It's kind of a quantum property. So assume we have a string like that. Then in our definition that was considered in this paper and several papers before, uh, we allowed a cover to look like that. So then this, the first position is covered by letter B in one of the occurrences and by letter A in the other occurrence. Uh, well, actually, okay, I, I could even say that in this sense, uh, the work by Ami et al is more realistic. And interestingly, uh, Ami et al show also that the general version of their problem is NP-complete, and they also consider a restricted version of their problem, which also can be solved in roughly n to the fourth uh, power time. So, but we didn't study that version of the problem, we study uh, this variant of the problem, and uh, this is once again the summary of our results and the previous results. And if you want an interesting open problem, uh, it seems that computing the uh, restricted approximate covers with under the humming distance is an interesting problem to work on. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jakob. Uh, we have time for.